Mike Fisher, the fish here, back home after a trip to New England that really wasn't very pleasant. Uh, we had oysters on Saturday night. Does that count? And then uh, the Cowboys got eaten alive on Sunday. The, the score, 13-9, not indicative of all the problems uh, that the Cowboys found themselves unable to deal with. And we can kind of rattle off some of them, but ultimately I want to get to why Jerry Jones went rattling off on things on Sunday night and why I bet you he'll do it again on Tuesday morning. And if the Cowboys don't handle Buffalo just right on Thursday, bet you'll do it again. Uh, let's start with the weather and the Cowboys' inability to handle it. They're not going to have a home field advantage at New England in near freezing rain that's coming down misty sideways and when it hits your skin, feels like little tiny knives are digging into your skin. Uh, I'm from Minnesota, I know what, what, what that's like, and that's what that was like. It was highly unpleasant. The Cowboys did not deal with it well in terms of handling the ball. They didn't deal with it well in terms of when the quarterback decided to put on a glove, something that frankly could have been decided Saturday, uh, Friday here in Frisco in the backyard at the Star had Jason Garrett opted to practice outside and get a little more acclimated to that weather. Lest you think that's an idiotic idea, a few weeks earlier when the Cowboys went to New York, the Cowboys practiced outside more than they usually did that week because it was cool weather and we thought it might acclimate his Texas-based team to New York weather. It's a great idea then. Why wasn't it a good idea this time around? Uh, does the ball slip out of your hands and is it, uh, is it harder? All, all those things are real. And the Patriots are supposed to have an advantage when they play in those elements and work in those elements every day, and you don't. But the advantages don't have to extend to missing field goals. Uh, they don't have to extend to an inability to field kickoffs, which is junior high stuff. What the Cowboys coaching staff and players were pulling in regard to uh, special teams work in New England, that was, that, that's junior high stuff. Uh, Bill Belichick realized that the Cowboys were going to struggle on shorter kicks. So after the first Patriots kick, which went to the end zone, and then I think the second one accidentally was short, and Tony Pollard and company were mystified as to what to do, Belichick did it the entire rest of the game. The block punt just can't happen. And the Patriots get their only touchdown because you allowed a block punt. Don't allow a block punt, which just can't happen. And the Cowboys win the game. Uh, we, we go on with special team decisions and special team misfunctions. Uh, the Patriots line up in punt return, and then they bring their return man up closer to the line of scrimmage. So they've got 11 men as if they're going to punt block. And the Cowboys had no idea what to do. So to get organized, they took a delay of game penalty. You, you, you don't practice that? Again, I, I've never coached in the NFL. I've coached junior high-level football, and you practice that. You know exactly what to do. Uh, you've got a captain on the field who's telling the guys who don't know what to do what to do. This is, and Jerry Jones used the word after the game, used the phrase fundamental. He said, fundamentals of coaching. The Cowboys failed in fundamentals of coaching. The Cowboys failed in areas that are, he said, 100% coaching, and the Cowboys got outcoached. I'm seeing some people still wondering why Jerry said these things after the game. I think Trey Wingo of ESPN saying, that's inappropriate. What, what, what kind of, out dude, I don't, I don't know what Cowboy team you've been watching for 10 years, but Jerry's patience with Jason Garrett is legendary, right? Uh, most people are angry at Jerry Jones because he's too patient. Now somebody's angry because he's not patient enough because he's saying, his truth, what he feels, and making observations that if he didn't say them, we'd call him a liar. If Jerry Jones said our special teams and our coaching of special teams and our organization and our communication, if he came out after that game, let alone after the Minnesota game and even the Detroit game, which was a win, and said our communication, our organization, our attention to detail is just fine, with all due respect to Trey Wingo, who I'm sure is fantastic, we'd call him a liar. So Jerry Jones can't win unless he tells his version of the truth, a version of the truth that came with some extra venom, I think, 
because of the Sunday morning story by my man Ian Rappaport at NFL Network suggesting that Jason Garrett, sources, is flirting with the idea of leaving the Cowboys after this year and going to the hated Giants should the Cowboys and Jerry Jones and the Joneses not treat him right. Kind of a form of leverage, I suppose. Whoever thought of that moronic idea, Jason, it could have been Jason, whoever in your circle told that to Ian Rappaport needs to get the hell out of your circle. That is suicide to on the morning of a game at New England, biggest game of this season, maybe the biggest game of your career, chance to go against Bill Belichick, beat him, chance to assert yourself as a real contender, chance to take charge of the division, and much more. You or somebody in your circle is allowing NFL Network to know that somewhere in your gigantic brain, you've got at least just a little room that's not thinking about the Patriots, that's not thinking about whether we should wear a glove, that's not thinking about whether we should practice in the rain on Friday, that's not thinking about whether or not before the fourth and seven field goal, we should think of this as four down territory because you are not getting another chance at scoring a touchdown against the number one rated Patriots. Before any of that is taking up too much space in your brain, you somehow have room in your head to think about using a threat to go to the Giants as leverage against Jerry Jones? You want to know why Jerry Jones was living? By the way, I haven't asked him this. I don't know this. But you want a good theory as from somebody that's covered him for 30 years and talked to him after games like he did last night for 30 years? Why he's got a little extra venom right now? The head coach that he's been unflappably loyal to for 10 years was involved in a report that would have that head coach try to use Giants leverage against Jerry Jones. There's a little extra venom for you. There's a little extra reason for you. Uh, keep it here. We will keep you and get you inside the star, inside the locker room, uh, inside the stadium. We've got a Thanksgiving game. Jason Garrett saying, and I already know this is his theme. He said it this morning on 105.3 The Fan, Monday morning. He said, eyes forward. That's his theme. Eyes forward means Buffalo Bills in a couple days. Eyes forward means Buffalo Bills on Thursday. Eyes forward doesn't mean I'm taking a job with the Giants in 2020. Fish out.